what's up guys welcome back to the channel in today's video as you can see we have a brand new build for the channel and uh it's worse than the last one as you can see this bike has lots of lots of damage i'm gonna get to it in a minute but that seems to be the trend of the channel every bike rebuilds just gets worse and worse and worse so as usual we're gonna bring it outside give it a proper wash and then we can get into it and start talking about all the many damage that's on this bike because i'm sure there's always something hidden And now guys with the bike all cleaned up let's get into it and start talking about everything that's wrong with it starting in the front end of the vehicle as you can see the dash is clearly busted super super bummed about that i was hoping that this is going to be salvageable but as you can see it isn't uh, the headlight bracket or the front fairing stay is also destroyed the steering stabilizer as you can see is completely destroyed too the front fender is non-existent the forks on this bike are also bent and leaking quite badly as you can see it's collecting over there. This is perhaps a better view. You can see how it just curves right over here. And we have those leaking forks. Super bummed about that too. The rad is leaking. You can see the coolant mark over here. Uh, the lower triple tree is destroyed. You can see the sign over here and over here too. But as you can see where it's smacked right against the frame on both sides. The engine covers appear to be okay. There's no scratches on the frame. That's a bonus. No scratches on the swing arm. But we're going to get back to that. The gas tank over here has a dent and some scratches and this dent is starting to rust already as you can see so this is going to need a new paint job and the back as you can see over here the fairing is completely destroyed it's missing the seats has some damage over here too uh the rear tail light assembly is all destroyed over there so we're going to need to replace that and uh, over here this stock fender is not in a good condition so a tail tidy for sure the exhaust seems to be okay so far just some little scratches which is not bad the swing gum appears to be okay we're gonna get back to that again and going over here no damage no scratches to the frame or the rear sets that's all good so that's a win and over here as you can see i have the beautiful jack supporting the motorcycle and if we remove this beautiful piece of wood over here oh we got a nice surprise over there no idea how that happened i've never seen that happen on a motorcycle and i've also rebuilt quite a bit of motorcycles and this came as a surprise to me as you can see the swing arm is completely destroyed but it doesn't stop there if we drop down lower over here as you can see the connecting arm is also snapped clean out on both sides never seen this before no idea how something like this would happen uh this damage is one of a kind but without much more talking you know how we do we're going to get into this start tearing the parts and figuring out what parts needs to be replaced with that said the next thing i'm gonna do is put some power to this bike attempt to start it up make sure we have a good working engine before we start diving too deep into this now we have the booster part hooked up bike's running and it sounds good that's really really good bike started right away no hesitation whatsoever it sounds beautiful i was told that this bike really has super low mileage obviously i cannot tell just because the dash is busted but i'm super happy about that now i'm gonna drain the coolant got no coolant up there and now same thing for both coolant lines I think we got an A for effort. The mess is quite minimal. That's a win. And just like that, we have the original ride of the motorcycle. Now I'm gonna remove the coolant reservoir. And we have that out and the ride fan. Now we have the fan out. All right, guys, and just like that, we can see what I presume is the cost of the leak over here because the blue clunt is clearly visible in this area on the other side. 
and this is caused by the coolant fan being pushed in here. Since overall the rod appears to be in really good condition, I'm going to attempt to have that repaired. If it's successful, good. If it isn't, then I'll go for a replacement one. Alright guys, right now what you see is the radiator from the Suzuki Jixxer 750. As you can see, I've done my best to clean out this area where I know for sure has a leak. I've kind of uh, fixed it because it was pushed in before. Right now, I've kind of rigged this up. As you can see, there's some duct tape over here, multiple layers. Some over here, over here, and another one over here. And I've also connected one of the hoses like this, and I've hooked it up to the air gun. My goal is to pressurize this and confirm that this is in fact the only leak that's on this rod before I attempt to fix it. Obviously, I know there are pressure testing kits out there for sale, but this is a quick DIY that I just came up with on the spot before I went ahead with the process of repairing this rad. Now, I'm gonna cut you guys back in, show you exactly what I'm doing, and see if we can actually find any other leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the air gun. We're gonna head and spring around. We have a confirmed leak over here. Obviously, my make do still is not working the greatest, same as over here. So it appears that this is the only leak on this ride for now. All right, guys, as you can see, we have the old ride editor over here. You can see where I attempted to perform a repair over here. I'm not even going to bother showing that video because, as you can obviously tell, it did not turn out good. And that's why we have this over here. We have a replacement radiator in here. This is obviously not going to get used. We're going to remove all the components in this one to this brand new one. And we can get it installed on the 750. Now we're going to bring this radiator out and get it installed on the bike. I have fully assembled this rad. I've also go ahead and washed it out just to make sure there's no debris in it. Now I'm going to install the rad fan. Now I'm going to install the brand new rad. We're going to line it up in here. Now I'm going to install the coolant reservoir. That's installed. Now I'm connecting the coolant hoses. And now it's securing it in place. Like so. If you've watched my video long enough, you know I always throw this GD racing engine covers on all my motorcycles. It saves you in case you go down and you don't have to replace one of these expensive covers. So I'm going to go ahead and toss this on and then we can keep on throwing more parts on the 750. Now we're going to start by installing the alternator cover, which is this piece over here. And that slaps on like this. And now we have the cover for this side of the motorcycle. Flaps on just like so. Now I'm going to put the cover on. Now guys, as you can see, we have the engine cover installed on the left side of the motorcycle and also on the right side of the motorcycle. It's obviously looking good. Again, like I said, this is going to protect the bike if it ever goes down. The new rad installed, we're going to go ahead and do a coolant flush. Fill it up with just water right now, run the bike for a little bit, drain it, and then throw some proper coolant in the motorcycle. And now we're going to start it up. Alright guys, so you basically want to run the bike until the coolant fan kicks on. 
right now, as you can see, the fan is not on yet. That means it's not rigs operating temperature just yet. And now we're gonna go ahead and drain the water. Oh, so now that I've cleaned up the mess, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the second cooling hose. And now reconnecting both hoses. Now I'm going to go ahead and refuel the coolant system with some new coolants. Alright guys, now as you can see, we have the new radiator fully installed on the motorcycle. We have coolants completely circulated. This vehicle has been run up to temp multiple times and that's now okay. The next part we're going to throw on on this bike, it's going to take you off the front end of this motorcycle. So, let's get to it. Alright, so what I have in this box is the complete front end of this motorcycle. And we're going to be installing on the 750. So as you can see, I went for the same gold forks, exact same year model of the Jixxer 750. So this is going to be a direct bolt on. And here we have All right, guys, now as you can see, I'm prepping to remove the forks from the motorcycle. Everything is done down below. We're gonna go ahead and secure the motorcycle to the cherry picker, AKA engine hoist, and get ready to drop this assembly. Alright guys, now as you can see, I've removed the front tire of the motorcycle. I have the tire sitting here, I have the axle back in the tire and the axle it is actually okay. It's straight and true, there's nothing wrong with the axle. But if we go back over here and we look at these forks, you will see that the left fork is way lower than the right fork. And that's because the right fork is completely seized, there's no moving this. It's solid in place compared to the one left one that goes up and down. So there's something wrong with this on the inside. Now that we've have things on the bottom taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking care of things up front so we can get ready to drop the forks. I also just realized that right in this ignition assembly, we have an open circuit right over there. So we're gonna need to fix that for sure. But somehow the bike's just started okay.
And now guys, as you can see, we have the complete steering stem or lower triple tree of the motorcycle. We have the motorcycle on the lift, it's still supported over there. We have the old Fox out here, and as you can clearly see, that one is bent and it's a lot shorter than the other one. I have tried to get this thing to come back to its full length, but it's impossible. And it is fully, it's not even compressing anymore. It's fully shot. No idea how something like that happens. Uh, but we have this one that appears to be straight, but it's not what the risk. We have two brand new ones. And this is what a proper set of forks should look like. Nice and straight. We have the replacement unit over here. And as you can see up on the triple tree, or on the lower triple tree, you can see how destroyed these are from the impact. And we have the brand new one over here, completely untouched. So we're gonna go ahead and toss this on the motorcycle and start securing things all back together. All right, guys, now as you can see, I've gone ahead and secured the lower triple tree and forks to the frame of the motorcycle. And I obviously know what you guys are thinking. Why haven't I shown how exactly I removed the nuts for the lower triple tree? Which are these nuts? Well, I took care of that in a special way because I do not have the Suzuki recommended tool. I had to come up with something. So I basically sacrificed one of my screwdrivers, made it flat like this, and with a hammer, I was able to get both of them off and re-secure it back to spec. I counted exactly how much threads were sticking out, which is almost one, and we got it back exactly where it was before. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the top triple tree. Go ahead and secure it with the hardware. Now I'm going to secure the steering stabilizer. And now that's all good. All right, guys, as you can see, I have the front forks fully installed. Nothing is torqued to specification just yet. I'm going to go ahead and install the front wheel with the new axle that was received with this assembly over here. And then we can torque everything down to specification. Now guys, as you can see, we have everything completely put together. It's looking good. We have the cherry picker engine hoist completely disconnected now. Everything up front here is fully talked to specification. So lots of really good progress on the 750 so far. As you can see, I have the front frame stay off, at least what's left of it. I'm gonna go ahead and install a brand new one. And in here we have a brand new front frame stay and it looks a lot better than the one we just removed from this motorcycle. And now I'm gonna install the brand new fern stay. I'm gonna line it up and put the hardware in. And now I'm gonna secure it in place. A whole bunch of parts has gone on this bike. We have the beautiful front fern stay in here. We can't install our dash just yet because as you can obviously see, it's in no condition to go on the motorcycle. And that's a wrap for today's video. As you can see, a lot of work got done on the Suzuki Jixxer 750. We have pretty much everything in the front end all taken care of. The next video, I'm hoping to throw more parts on this motorcycle and get it a step closer to being completed. On that note, I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, all that fancy stuff. Be sure to cop some merch and help support the channel. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.